Hello everybody, it's me Ryan here, we're MNR Productions, and welcome to my review of the very awesome, very huge, it's actually the biggest LEGO set ever produced, it's the LEGO Star Wars 75192 Millennium Falcon. This of course is in the Ultimate Collector Series line, so you're going to find a lot of extra cool stuff with it, including the little plaque with a bunch of information on it, and some stuff in the instruction manual, which we will get to. This set includes the most pieces ever included in a LEGO set with 7,541 pieces, which is amazing. This thing took me about 15 hours to build. The 10 minifigs included are two Porgs, BB-8, Han Solo from The Force Awakens, Rey from The Force Awakens, Finn from The Force Awakens, Chewbacca, who could be from either, and then we have Han from basically Episode 5, Leia from Episode 5, a C-3PO, and lastly a Minoc, which isn't really a minifigure. This set also includes the ability to switch between the original trilogy version of the Millennium Falcon and the sequel trilogy of the Millennium Falcon. So we have the radar dish for the sequels and the radar dish for the original trilogy. I do want to take a look at the minifigures up close before we start and then I'm going to get onto the box. So let's go ahead and take a look at the minifigs up close and personal. I really want to get a good look at those porgs. In the interest of time, I'm going to show you all the minifigures at once, basically. We're going to go in close and take a look at each minifigure individually, but I'm not going to spend too much time on each. Just so you know, there are three different exclusive minifigures in this set. We have the Porg, the Han Solo from Episode 5, and the Princess Leia from Episode 5. Other than that, all these minifigures can be found in other sets. The Minoc itself is exclusive, but it's not a minifigure. So we start out with the two Porgs included, and they are very, very cute. They are exclusive to this set. You can only find Porgs in the UCS Millennium Falcon as of now, 2017, but it is possible that they could show up in some future Last Jedi or even Episode 9 sets. Who knows? Next, we have BB-8, which is not exclusive to this set at all. He's just the regular old BB-8 that we've received in plenty of other sets now. Then we have Episode 7, Han Solo, who looks amazing, although he is, again, returning from a previous set. He does look really, really cool. You will find on the back, he does have a second face, and he has some pretty good back printing there as well, so a nice minifigure inclusion. Then we have Rey from The Force Awakens slash Last Jedi here, or I guess this would be the Last Jedi version, right? Because the um, minifigures included, the Porgs, are Last Jedi as well. You'll find she also has a second face. She has a very nice hairpiece as well, but you can find her in other sets. Then we have Finn. Very nice looking Finn minifigure. Again, findable in other sets. You'll find that he is the Episode 7 version, I guess, because his jacket is not stitched like we find on the Episode 8 sets. So that does confirm that this is Episode 7. I take back what I said earlier about Rey being Episode 8. So definitely Episode 7 because Han Solo died in Episode 7, right? <laughs> then we have Chewbacca, who can be from either era. He doesn't really look different from either era. So you can say Chewbacca is from Episode 7 or he's from the original trilogy, basically Episode 5. Then we get into the other two exclusive minifigures, which are really, really cool. We have Han Solo from Episode Episode 5. You can see he's got this really neat hairpiece, which I believe first showed up in uh, the UCS Death Star, maybe? I I'm not 100% sure if this is a new hairpiece, actually. It might be. It's the Episode 5 hairpiece. We have his outfit from Episode 5 as well. You'll find on the back he's got a gas mask for when he's inside the earthworm. I guess he's not really an earthworm, right? The giant space worm, the slug, and uh, the space slug. So, very cool. That's the first time ever that we've had that face print on a Han Solo minifigure. So, that's really neat. And then you'll find the Hoth Leia here is going to be a similar story with that face print around back. You'll find her to be a very cool minifigure. These minifigures are going to be really expensive to buy separately, so I would just really recommend getting the set itself if you want the minifigs. Um, just because I know, I know that I've seen a couple of the Han Solo and Leia's sell for, you know, upwards of $100 or over $100 already for both of them. So you may as well just buy the whole set, right? And then we get a C-3PO, who is nothing special, but I mean, that's something to be said because, you know, 10 years ago, this minifigure would just be, you know, absolutely amazing, but now it's just kind of uh, run of the mill. But he does look really amazing. He's got great printing all over and very detailed and for such an experienced and, you know, normal LEGO Star Wars collector like I am, I'm really used to it, but it's still a really cool and detailed minifigure. Lastly, we get the Minoc, who has that piece which allows it to uh, basically suction, suck onto the Millennium Falcon, or hold on to it. You can see it just connects very easily. It's got green eyes, if you want to call them eyes. Then it's got some wings, and uh, just a pretty cool Minoc. The only Minoc ever created in LEGO. Maybe you will get one again in the future. There's no way to know, but uh, as of right now, after about 20 years, well, 18 years of LEGO Star Wars, this is the only Minoc that LEGO has ever created. And that is all of the minifigs for the Millennium Falcon. Of course, missing, or feeling like it's missing, is going to be 
Episode 7 Luke, right? Everyone wanted Episode 7 Luke in this set. It did not happen, so maybe with more Last Jedi sets in the future, who knows? But Episode 7 Luke still not found. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about the UCS Millennium Falcon. I'm really curious. Also, do you think there will ever be a set bigger than the Millennium Falcon, both in piece count and price? What could it be? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you do enjoy this review, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Also, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm going to be drop testing this in the future. So if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you want to see this thing shatter into a million pieces, I don't know when I'm going to be doing the video, but it will be out by the end of the year, I think. I'll have a link in the description and a link in the pinned comment when that video does eventually come out. This is the front of the box. This is where you'll find the Lego Star Wars logo in the top left. It also says Ultimate Collector Series in the top right. It doesn't have that Ultimate Collector Series seal like we've seen on some of the previous and cheaper UCS sets. You can see the Millennium Falcon featured prominently on the planet Bespin here. It has a little Bespin thing in the background as well as the clouds and a few TIE fighters on Bespin. And down farther, you'll find all the information as a set. It's recommended for ages 16 and up. It's set number is 75192, obviously called the Millennium Falcon. It has 7,541 pieces, which is incredible. And it is Disney branded down there in the bottom right. So that's the front of the box. This is what you find on top of the box. It just says Lego Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series. And then it has an outline of the Lego Millennium Falcon. And it looks absolutely awesome there. I really like the detail on the box that they've put in here. On the right side of the box, you'll find another outline of the UCS Falcon, as well as some more information about the Falcon. It has that little uh, picture from the uh, advertisement that leaked early of the Falcon, and then it basically has some text down there, which you can pause to read if you want. It's also in other languages, because this is not a strictly American box, which is kind of cool. You can also see here it has a no razor sign, which means you're not supposed to open the box on this side. And there are those green razor signs showing that you're supposed to open the box with this side. Here it's going to have the LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series logo again, and then it's also going to show off the dimensions of the set with the LEGO outline there and the height of it down below. And then obviously here are the minifigures. We have BB-8, Han Solo, Chewbacca, Finn, Rey, C-3PO, Han Solo again, and Princess Leia as well as two Porgs down there on the end. Lastly, adorning the back of the box, we have this beautiful shot of the Force Awakens Millennium Falcon inside of some type of hangar bay or area. It has five minifigs standing on the outside. We have Han Solo, Chewbacca, Finn, Rey, and BB-8 down there. It also is going to show off all of the features of the Millennium Falcon, the ability to switch radar dishes and basically additions of the Millennium Falcon. You can see that uh, Millennium Falcon is on Jakku there, which is kind of cool. And here we have the Minoc chasing after Han and Leia and Chewbacca down there as well with the minifigure pad opened up. Here you can see where you can put Finn into the gunner area. And then we have the hollow chest room, the cockpit, the other interior room where C-3PO and Han and Leia are kissing. And then down below we have the little basically underneath ground area where BB-8 and Rey and Finn are. So the back of the box does a good job of showing off all the features and some smaller details of the Money of Falcon that you might not notice on the front of the box. Lastly, the bottom side is just black and it says Lego Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series. And then it also has the barcode for the set. This is going to be the unboxing experience. Now, I've done a video unboxing the Millennium Falcon already. You can find that on my channel or linked in the description below if you want. But I will show you a quick run through here as we open it up. You find another silhouette or detailed, uh, basically, sketch of the Millennium Falcon there. It is very, very cool. And then opening up again, we find this Millennium Falcon logo right here. Very, very cool. And then getting farther into the interior, we have this area, which is where the instruction booklet would be. Now, I, I didn't put the instruction booklet back in here because I uh, wanted to be very careful. This has some really cool art on it. They all do as we get in here. So that's pretty cool. You can see if we orient it the right way, you can see what kind of section that is of the Falcon. You can see the turret up top here. It wraps around. That's where the instruction booklet would have been. Um, be careful when you're opening up this box. Make sure it's vertical and not horizontal like this. Otherwise, the instruction booklet would have just fallen right out, which happened to me. Um, inside, you have four separate boxes, which all contain different numbered bags. And it's really awesome because they did a cool, cool thing with this. And they put the Millennium Falcon all together with those boxes. You can see that there. It looks really awesome. 
And I do want to pull out one of the boxes. All the boxes are basically the same other than the difference. Um, they all have quotes on them. So this one says, she may not look like Mutz, but she's got it where it counts, kid. And uh, that's really awesome. You can see this Millennium Falcon here. As we get through the other boxes, this is going to move up and up. You can also notice that the Falcon does wrap around the entire box. So each of these boxes individually have a complete Falcon on them, and then they combine to create their own Falcon. So this box is gonna have another quote. It says, I've made a lot of special modifications myself. You can see that logo there. And the Falcon again is gonna wrap around there. The next box's quote says, it's the ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. And then we have one more box underneath. And again, spoiler warning, if you're getting this set for yourself and you don't wanna know, uh, this one says, she's the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. And uh, that is all four quotes on all four boxes. The very cool thing that LEGO did with the boxes here, I really like the premium unboxing feel of this set and uh, again really awesome job by lego those are the four boxes they're about the size of a 120 dollars set box this is the instruction manual it's absolutely massive it has 494 numbered pages and includes 1379 total steps which is insane you can see the death star back here a couple of the 2014 imperial star destroyers down there on the art down below and a few TIE fighters over here as well. Very, very awesome. Now opening it up, you're gonna find some very cool stuff that tells you more about the Millennium Falcon and about the designer and the Lego Star Wars team in specifics. Now, if I don't show these pages long enough for you, you're more than welcome to pause the video or take a screenshot or however so that you can get your good look at this, but uh, I will try to give you a good look at each page. And this is the first page. Over here on this second page, you're gonna find some art about the Millennium Falcon and more words basically about it so very cool original art on Bespin with the Millennium Falcon there uh, very very awesome and then as we pull this back you're going to find more art from the Millennium Falcon this one's just art on this page some, some original sketches it looks like so very very awesome from the design team to include this I really like these UCS instruction manuals here you can see more art more information about it some of the um, basically what everything on the set is equipment bay deflector shield protector uh, sensor dish over here we have behind the scenes of the Millennium Falcon, so back when they first created the movie and everything and how they did it, so that's really awesome as well. Great job by LEGO to include some of the original art on the Millennium Falcon and just kind of show it in its glory. Over here we have the Millennium Falcon on set behind the Star Destroyer, some more pictures down here, some more words about it up there. Uh, then we have the history of the Lego Millennium Falcon, which is basically a Q&A session with the designer of the set. And you can see him there with the set there. And there's the Q&A section. I'm not going to read through all that because it would just take way too long. Maybe I'll do that as a separate video. Here we have the timeline of the Millennium Falcon. And this shows all the Millennium Falcons ever created by Lego, obviously omitting a lot of the um, ones from the advent calendars. But they are all here. Very, very cool. They just kind of show off all of them. And then, of course, you have the sketch of the new UCS one. Very, very cool. And here we have more pictures of it, more different stuff. Meet the model designer and a lot of different uh, stuff here. So I, do, I just felt like this was necessary to show in the review. I felt like showing off the unique instruction experience on this set was definitely necessary as we keep going back and forth. Here we have some more art and Q&A with the designer or whoever. And then we have the person who designed the minifigures and a lot of the decals in the set, as they like to call them at LEGO. And then finally we get some more pictures, lastly, and then it will get into another language of this, because again, this isn't a strictly American version, but um, there we have it. So some original concept sketches here to finish it off. And again, lastly, um, it just has a few more languages in here. That's the instruction manual. I do wanna show you something in the back of the instruction manual though. I felt like it was necessary to show this. This is how you carry the Falcon. You have to put both hands underneath. You don't want to grab it by the panels or the sides or anything like that because that will just break off immediately. So you definitely want to grab it underneath like they show here. And so on the plaque, you'll find lots of cool information. And the first thing I noticed right off the bat is that it's using the Force Awakens radar dish on there. So you're not using the original Trilogy radar dish on the plaque, which I find a little bit weird. Uh, we have the Lego Star Wars Millennium Falcon. It's a Corillion Light Flater YT 1300 series modified by Han Solo. Its manufacturer is the Corillian Engineer Engineering Corporation. Its length is 34.75 meters, although you'll find that the model we have here is uh, just about three feet. Its engines, its maximum speed, its hyperdrive speed, its weapons, and the capacity for two pilots, six passengers, and 100 metric tons of cargo. That's a lot of cargo.
And now with the plaque back in place, I do want to show you a lot of the details and intricate features of this Money of Falcon. So let's get this tripod moved up closer. We'll start with the cockpit and just work our way around the ship. So the cockpit is this brand new custom printed piece. It has the ability to fit four minifigures inside, which is really awesome. So I'll go ahead and show the way you take it off is you're just going to pull it straight off. It's basically on some pieces that extend out like that. You can see those around and there's one underneath as well. This is the cockpit piece. It's got a very nice print on it as well as this piece in the front here. So it's much larger than the one that we find on the smaller Millennium Falcon nowadays, but we can fit four minifigs in here. So I'm going to get them in there. We have Han Solo and you do get a couple of old control panels in this set. So you guys can see the control panels here and there. None of those prints are new to this set. They are from previous sets from the past and you're not getting anything exclusive there, unfortunately. And Chewbacca will sit right down on there. Now that we've got them all in there, we're gonna try to put the cockpit back on so that you can see them all fitting in there very nicely. Um, and it does have, I've had some trouble with it going on. Um, it's like a little bit flimsy. It's, uh, you know, you gotta try to get all four to connect at once. But eventually you can get it on there and it looks pretty cool with all the minifigs inside. They actually look really cool in there. You get a nice idea of how good the cockpit is in size uh, with all four minifigs in there. So a really nice upgrade to the cockpit. I know with the last UCS Mini Falcon, the cockpit was really lacking and I feel like they've done a great improvement here with this one. I do wanna say I don't know all the technical terms, so I apologize for as I'm going around and showing you some of the details on this set. I'm not gonna know like all the name of names of these like ventilation shafts and everything, but you're just getting a good idea of the detail here. This is a really excellent build. It really uses uh, a lot of design cues from the previous Money Falcon, but really adds onto it with a lot of small detailing. These pieces here on both sides of these front wings, I guess, are printed. You have one here, and you also have one over there. They use a lot of these tube pieces to create that type of detail on all the sides there. And this center area, which is basically like a docking type thing or for loading, I believe, um, it's built in, it's not going anywhere, you can't move it up or down, but the design process to getting that on there is really cool. It's actually a really sturdy way of doing it, I think. You have some more detail up here, as well as some panels. Um, these panels aren't really meant to come off, although they can come off uh, rather easily, although you will find that by removing them, you're only really gonna find the interior of the set in there and really nothing um, that's usable or playable. Um, over here we have the original Trilogy Radar Dish, which is a new print, and you can see it there. It looks really cool. They also use this piece in the middle to kind of finish it off as opposed to leaving it empty there, which would have looked a lot worse, I think. Here you have some bullet damage on the side of the Falcon that is a sticker. It's a little bit of a weird one to just kind of throw in there and give it some damage, but you can kind of omit that sticker and it won't be much taking away from the set in my opinion. You get a lot of the same detailing here on the other side of the Falcon, so. Looking at the hallway leading from the cockpit to the center area, it looks really awesome. This is one of the last things that you build on the set and I think it actually lurks, looks and works really well. No, there is not actually a walkway, unfortunately. I know a lot of people are probably disappointed, but it is still here. It's all tiled, it uses these curved tiled pieces, it uses some phone bits, some of these binocular pieces, and some grill pieces, and some studs to all get this look. It looks really awesome. I think Logo did a great job there. Then you have this panel to kind of complete in that area. Here you have these, and they look really awesome as well. Down below is where you can release the uh, loading, or rather the walkway, to get up into the Falcon. So you can have your minifigures down here and get up and into the Falcon pretty easily. So you could have been down here or whatever. Um, no, this does not lead to anywhere inside of the Falcon, but it's just kind of a cool little detail extra up in there. I'll try to give you a look at what's in there. And basically it just leads to a big empty area. You're not really getting anything in there. Uh, it just leads to the inside of this whole thing, which is basically uh, two, two halves um, on top of each other. And it's just kind of hollow in there with no detailing or anything. So just kind of an idea of what's on the inside there. As we move to the back, you get more detailing. You get a lot more ventilation grills back here. The detailing all around is amazing. I just want to give you guys a good look at it. Uh, I don't really have much to say about it. I just uh, want to give you all a good solid look at it all the way around. So a lot of uh, more ventilation type looking things here. You can spin these if you really want to. 
Here we have the turret, which we'll get back around to after we take a look at all of the interior stuff. I do want to show off the engine area on this set right now. And this is what the engines look like. It uses the same blue tubing and uh, gray ship mass, I believe, as the old Millennium Falcon. So you're getting a similar look on the back there, just again with a lot more detailing on the top and the bottom. You have this detailing on the bottom, which is quite immense, and there is a lot of it down there. And I think I'm going to try to get you a better view of it in a minute here, but... Just again, the engines look incredible. I think they did a great job bringing it back a similar version, uh, similar design from the previous model. And just giving you a overview look of it. They are very wide. They run basically around most of the ship and you can see they end up right there. You get more detailing all the way over to basically what is the same mechanism as on the other side, except this one does not have the uh, pathway that can drop down and allow the figures to go up and down or kind of create that illusion of playability, I guess. So I do want to show you guys the interior. So let's reset and show off the interior features of this set, which I'm sure a lot of people are curious about, uh, given that a lot of people wanted a full interior on this set. Some people are like, oh, I, there shouldn't be any interior because they're kind of giving away some of the uh, stability or whatever, but we're going to take a look at it and I'll show you and tell you what I think about so it. So to access the interior, you're going to find some removable panels and I think LEGO's done a great job of hiding these on the set. The first of which you're going to want to really remove the radar dish before you get into because I feel like just by removing the radar dish, you get a better access into it. And just a quick note, if you do want to put on the other radar dish, you just bring it on over and you'll place it onto this black bit here after you remove the original Trilogy radar dish. And uh, that's pretty simple, but maybe I'll take another look at that later. But the easiest way to remove this panel is just grab it by those two pieces there. And then this panel is going to slide out and up simultaneously. It kind of stays in with those Technic bits there. And that's how you access this interior bit. The other panels here really don't come off. Now, this one does come off. It's only held in by that yellow pin. So if you really want to get some extra uh, space to use, that's one way to do it. Um, but as you can see, you just kind of have an empty, hollow space there. But inside, you're going to find lots of cool little details that you can play around with. And I do want to bring in some minifigures and give you a better look. So inside of this section, we have the seating area with the hollow chest, I believe that's what it's called. Um, we have some grilling on the floor, which looks pretty cool. We have some little canister looking things right there. And then getting over to where Finn is, there's a complete control panel. There are stickers on that control panel, but it still looks pretty good. And then you have this really cool seat that Finn is in. It does spin around. It has a really cool design with the back here. I really like it. And then we also have the hallway illusion piece in there, which gives the illusion of depth into a hallway that would lead into more of the interior of the Falcon and back into the uh, cockpit area over there, I believe. So lots of cool details in here, especially that illusion of depth sticker. I actually really like it. Also, those are stickers on the seating area where Ray is as well. The hollow chest piece, I believe again, is called hollow, set, hollow chest, is printed, so nothing to worry about there, I guess, if you're big on anti-sticker. To close up this little area, all you have to do is take this piece, you're just gonna wanna place it into those two white Technic receiver pieces, I guess, if you wanna call them female adapters. And then you're gonna wanna take this piece and line it up and basically drop it on right there. It'll fit in real nicely. You can see the paneling basically flushes right into it. It's like you never even knew there was an interior there, which I think is really great. The other part of the interior is on the back side. You can see it's on this area of the set. And again, it's so hidden that you would never even know it's there unless I'm telling you. And the way to access it is you're gonna wanna pull away this piece, which just kinda of pulls away. It's that same technic kind of technique. And then you're gonna to wanna to just pull up this piece, which isn't really held on by anything. So that gives you access to this part of the interior, which has a couple more cool features and some printed stuff that I'm gonna show you. So having adjusted my lighting, you can see this part of the ship also has that illusion of depth with those hallways right there. There's one there and one there. They both lead to different areas, which is pretty cool. There's also this panel right here, which is going to pop right up really easily. All right, so eventually it pops out and you can remove it. And basically, I believe that's where BB-8 and Ray try to hide when Han Solo and Chewbacca get back on the Falcon originally. Now, obviously, there isn't as much space there uh, as there was in the movie, I guess, but uh, it is a possible feature. Again, it's kind of hard for someone like me with bigger hands to get into, but I'm sure that kids will have no real trouble playing with something like that. There's also that sticker there, which I believe is supposed to be like the hyperdrive, and uh, then there's also some control panels there, one of which is a sticker, the other two down below are printed. You can just kind of see more of that hyperdrive piece there with that sticker on top. And back here, it just kind of leads to nothingness. It's just a hallway to a blank area with a small like control area, but not too much, just kind of some black pieces kind of ridden throughout the wall. 
On this side here, we also have these, which can lift up and down very easily. Kind of gives you some interior extra access if you want it. Some storage area as well. If you really want to store something there, you could really fit BB-8 in there really easily as a hiding spot for him. But other than that, those just kind of sit like that the whole time and uh, don't really do anything other than just kind of look pretty. So the back interior, much like the front interior area, you're just gonna place these back on the way you found them. Um, the Technic piece is gonna fit in there pretty easily. And then you're just gonna place this on top like that. And it's all in there flush. You'd never know it was there unless I told you so. So that's really cool. Now let's get to this area, which is where the turret is. You have a turret on the top and there's also a turret on the bottom, although I'm kind of hard pressed to show it to you. It's a little bit difficult to get up underneath, but uh, the turret on top is rotatable in all types of directions. It's actually the same exact design on the bottom. You can pull this up and away to reveal a small interior area. We also get basically a tie cockpit piece printed on there. There's also the same design again on the bottom underneath down there, which you might be able to kind of see through there. But you have this pilot seat where you can place your gunner in this case, our gunner will be Finn. You just get him in this seated position really easily and he's gonna clip right in there. Uh, it's got studs on the bottom where his feet are and he will just sit right in there. There's that small little basically control panel or handle area. Uh, something really cool, if you guys know about the old UCS Money Falcon 10179, they basically use just a Lego seat, a Lego seat that you would find like in a Lego city car or whatever. And it's pretty crazy how much more detail they put into this one as opposed to the old one. And it really just lets you know how far they've come. This will slide right back in really easily. And then he's in there. You can see him through here if you wanted to, but very, very cool, very detailed. And again, you're gonna find the same thing on the bottom minus the seat for him. He doesn't, he's not able to sit on the bottom because it would be way too hard for someone to get underneath and put a minifigure in there. Speaking of the bottom, there is some great landing gear on this set. You basically have seven of the exact same type of feet or legs, and they are found throughout the ship, which is accurate to the UCS or actual in-universe model. You can also see there's tons of paneling underneath. They've done a great job getting all of the detail. You can see even underneath the front area, there's paneling. So they really, really added a lot of pieces through all of the paneling. And I do wanna give you a full view of the bottom side. You can see all of that detail under there. And here we are dead on in the back, you can see that, and it just is the same all the way around. It's really, really awesome, the amount of detail they put on this set. You can see the gun underneath the bottom here, which like I said, is the same as the one on the top, minus the ability to put the minifigure in on the seat down there. There's also this kind of hidden feature underneath the Falcon. I don't really wanna call it hidden because it's well documented, but you can pull out this turret and have it shoot. It can rotate all the way around 360 degrees. And then when you want to put it back, you just have to push it back up and pull the cover back over, which is a lot easier to do with two hands. It's just such an amazing model. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when you switch it over to the Force Awakens version. And it's actually very easy to switch between versions on this set. Of course, we have the original Trilogy radar dish included, but we also get the Force Awakens radar dish, which you can just place on this black circle here, which is where the original Trilogy one would be if it was on there. And you can just kind of lightly place it on there. It'll fit right on very easily. And then it's rotatable very simply, 360 degrees up and down, probably about 40 degrees, I'd say. You don't get much up and down movement with it, but it does look really cool having the ability to have both. And then of course, there's also included these two pieces here, which are gonna attach right on the front of the tips there, which is something that I kind of found odd. I didn't even know this was a difference between the two versions, but they do go on here. You can place them on there. They fit right on with that Technic bit. And uh, again, they, it's not something that you'd notice really if it was missing, but it is something extra that's on the front of it if it's in the Force Awakens version. And here's just a better look of what that looks like when you have those on there. And then of course the Force Awakens radar dish up there as well looks really good. An amazing looking set in my opinion. Another kind of cool thing you can do with the Minoc is because the front of him has basically an inverted stud is you can basically stick him anywhere onto the Millennium Falcon and have him eating at it. And that's just something kind of cool. You can have him on the front there. You could really stick him on the bottom as well because there's a, there's a studs on the bottom. You can stick him on the side, basically anywhere you can find a stud. So it's pretty cool that the Minoc can fit anywhere. It's a really cool and really neat addition with this set. Again, you can really stick him anywhere and he can be eating. It'd be cool if you got multiples of them in the set and and you could have a bunch of them eating on the money of Falcon and kind of getting at the electronics on it. But again, that's what you can do with the Minoc. I also do want to note that there is a very specific way of how to pick up and carry and move this set. Now, I do want to say that you can't pick it up by like this or really in any other orientation because the limbs of it or the panels will just fall off. 
There are some very sturdy areas underneath, basically where the interior is and on the other side that they have basically um, built in just for moving it. And you just lift it up. You have to put your hands underneath. You have to basically feel around for it, but you have to lift it in that area. Otherwise it may break and you just lift it up. It's very, very heavy. It's about 25 pounds, but that is the only way to pick it up. Um, otherwise you are very likely going to break it and have a bad time. So I would make sure if you get this set, make sure you know what you're doing when you're going to be moving it. Don't move it too often. You don't want to take too many risks, but uh, definitely be careful if you are. This is the biggest Lego set ever made by a wide margin. It's $300 more than anything Lego has ever publicly released and it's absolutely amazing. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy to be a proud owner of it and it's a really awesome and detailed Lego set. This is not a Lego set for the casual fan. This is not for, you know, your cousin Jimmy's, you know, 10 year old birthday. This is a very big and expensive set and this is something that should be really cherished by people who want it. I think it's something that you shouldn't just go out and buy on a limb if you're not sure if you want it. I think it's definitely at $800 a premium Lego set and it definitely presents itself in that way, especially with the unboxing experience and all of the detail and the, the cool minifigs included in this set. I would definitely recommend it for anyone who's a lifelong fan of Star Wars and really likes the design of the Millennium Falcon and really, really likes Lego. I think it's a great mashup and they work really well here. Um, it just looks like an amazing Millennium Falcon model. It's a very nice upgrade from the model from 10 years ago. I would say if you own the 10179 UCS Millennium Falcon from 2007, I would say sell that one and get this one. That's how good this one is. I do want to give this set a rating and my rating for this set is a 9.5 out of 10. I do feel like it has a couple of downfalls being that you can't move it very easily and obviously that is to be expected. I also feel like we're missing some minifigures. I don't know, but for an $800 Lego set, I still wish there was more. I wish we had more. I don't know. They could have included more exclusive stuff. Like the only three exclusive minifigures in this set are the episode five Han, Leia, and then the two Porgs as well. So only three different exclusive minifigs. There should have been more in my opinion. Other than that, this is what I would call a perfect Lego set. Barring the price, it's perfect. I mean, obviously, you know, some people are gonna be like, oh, $800 is too much. And some people are gonna be like, oh, I'm just $800. That's, I mean, that's a great price. So, you know, it's kind of back and forth, who knows, but uh, it's up to you whether it's worth it really in the end of the day. So I would say it's worth it. But again, it's up to you whether you feel like $800 justifies this set here. So with that being said, guys, if you did enjoy this review, please give it a thumbs up. I wanna know your opinion on the UCS Millennium Falcon. Will there ever be a bigger set than Millennium Falcon? Let me know in the comment section below what could it possibly be that could be bigger than this set? What do you think about this set? Do you think the minifigures are cool? Do you think the set is cool? Let me know. I want to know what everybody thinks, what the general consensus on something this big is. I know the demand for it has been immense. It has been sold out for a few days now and is going to be sold out for probably the rest of the year. It's going to be really hard to get for people that want it. So. Uh, yeah, that is all for this review, guys. If you did enjoy, again, please leave a like. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you uh, be around for more of my future LEGO videos. And with that being said, guys, I will see you on the next one. Thank you all for watching. Peace out.